What happened after the romantic dinner, the beautiful glass of red wine? What about the arguments? What about the sloppiness? What about the bruise the next morning? Where'd that come from? I've lived it and I've seen it. Fading effect bias is critical. If I had known about this, it could have possibly saved me some suffering. Coach Victoria, what is fading effect bias and why is it relevant? Fading effect bias is a psychological phenomenon that allows us to minimize terrible experiences in our lives. It really serves us as human beings. In fact, it's part of the reason that we have continued to survive as a species. I'm a mother of four. When I was pregnant with my first child and going through labor and delivery, I said, oh Lord, I'm never doing this again. And yet there I was two years later doing it again, and then again, and again. Fading effect bias, I forgot how hard it was. And instead, I was attached to the beauty of it. So that serves us really well as a species. Not so much when it comes to alcohol use disorder. From personal and professional experience, I have countless stories of hearing, am I crazy? Why in the world would I go back to this? I had just started to get some momentum. I had lost some weight. I was less bloated. I was more productive. And then I got drunk again. I've lived it and I've seen it. Fading effect bias is critical. If I had known about this back when I was on that merry-go-round, it could have possibly saved me some suffering. It's highly effective uh, as we educate our members around why in the world did you stay in that cycle? It helps also create some self-compassion and understanding that they're not alone, they're not crazy, they're not broken. So someone comes into alcohol-free lifestyle and they're excited. They're also miserable because that most recent hangover is not that long ago. And there's wreckage, there's collateral damage, their family's upset, they know that they're behind, they might look good on the outside at work, but they know they're not reaching their potential. Maybe they have some legal issues or they're on the cusp of major health issues. They come in and they're committed, they're ready to go. And then after a while, it's like that song that you dance to at prom with your prom date. Oh, how sweet it was, right? In fact, I use that. I'll say, who remembers their prom date? Everyone raises their hand. Remember how much you loved him? Yeah. You left that relationship for a reason. When you hear that song playing, are you going to go back? And they're like, well, no. And yet it doesn't work that way with alcohol. When we hear that song playing, we remember the fun parts of drinking. Oh my gosh, remember that time? Remember that? It was so hilarious. Oh, that was such a romantic dinner. What we don't remember is what happened later in the day. What happened after the romantic dinner, the, 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 the beautiful glass of red wine at dinner? What happened after dinner? Do you remember what happened after dinner? What about the arguments? What about the sloppiness? What about the bruise the next morning? Where'd that come from? The nausea, the dry mouth, the, all the things we don't pay attention to it anymore. And so in our program, as, as we've talked about, we do not dwell in the past. We don't do what in AA they call a drunk log. I don't need to hear what happened. But we do have a quiet awareness, a quiet memory of what it was like so that when fading effect bias occurs, and it will, you can gently, with compassion, say to yourself, I understand that you're reminded of the good times. Let's talk about what really happened. Let's think through that memory. Did it really, really go as we're recalling, or was it tainted? Would that have been the same outcome if alcohol had not been involved? And so it can be empowering to simply understand why we have these thoughts. We can't stop our thoughts. 
In fact, welcome your thoughts. Ask them, what am I meant to learn from you? Why are you here? And think it through. And that leads to an intentional choice around your drinking. You're no longer being swept away by those romantic memories, by that fading effect bias. You can see it for what it is. Okay, that was a good time. And then what happened? Today, I can remember the good times and take into account what it turned out like and make a better choice for what I'll do today. How can I get those good feelings that I'm romanticizing without a drink? What did I love about that romantic dinner? Oh, the food, the music, looking into my partner's eyes, sweet nothings. Can I get that? Yes, I can. And I can miss out on all the nonsense that follows that first or second glass. Repeating those patterns again, going back to the neuroplasticity, allows us to create new synapses, which lead to new neural pathways, which over time will become the default behaviors.